this is Melissa from got to teach I just wanted to give a little demo on how I use uh, tile spacers when teaching adding and subtracting integers um, these are the tile spacers that you'll find at your local hardware store usually they're white for some reason they are very orange bright orange which is kind of nice um, and these are, I believe are quarter inch and there's 500 to a bag you'll probably need two bags for a class of 33 or more and all you do is take a tile spacer um, the ones that are the way they come are intact you use those as your positives and then you just uh, take some scissors and just cut the little nibs off to make negatives and for each student you'd want about 10 to 15 of each of the signs um, and then this is a little mat I just made. Um, you can download it free on my blog, or you can even just use a basic piece of paper and have the students write a line, draw a line right across the middle. Um, the top is for the positives and the bottom are for the negative numbers. And then I just show them how to do various problems using these manipulatives. And I always start with addition first. We spend a few days on addition before going to subtraction. Subtraction is where it gets a little tricky. And I start with a really basic problem that doesn't even have any negative numbers, like 7 plus 3. And I just start with this basic problem just so that they can get an idea on how, of how the manipulatives work and how they're going to use the tile spacers with their uh, positive-negative mat. So 7 plus 3, 7 is a positive, 3 is a positive. It essentially means you have 7 positives. And to it, you are adding three positives for a total of 10. So obviously, that's just a basic addition problem. And we just use that to kind of get them started to see how we're going to be using these. So um, here's a problem that actually has a negative integer. So we have negative 5. So we put 5 negatives. Um, and we're adding to it 4 positives. So we put 4 positives. And this is when we get to talking about zero pairs, and obviously they've already had lessons on talking about opposite integers and how opposite integers together equal zero. Um, and that's essentially what we're doing here is we have zero pairs, so we take all the positives and negatives, as many as we can, and we line them up. So we always line them up on the uh, middle line, and we've made four zero pairs, and each of these zero pairs are their value is zero. So we can take them off of the board and what we're left with is a negative. So the answer would be negative one. Here's another problem. It's nine, and that's a positive. So we put five, or excuse me, nine positives on our board. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or nine. And we are going to add two negatives to it. So we add two negatives to our board. And then we make our zero pairs. And we're able to make two zero pairs, which we can clear off of our board. And what we're left with is positive 7. And my last addition example is negative 6 plus a negative 3. So I'm going to clear my board. And I'm going to put six negatives. And to it, I'm adding three negatives. And for this problem, there are no zero pairs. So our answer is what you see, it's negative nine. So the students get that. They're pretty comfortable with addition. Um, and then comes subtraction. And it throws them for a little bit of a loop. Um, so again, I start with a basic subtraction problem just to familiarize them with the manipulatives and kind of start slow. It's five, and that's a positive five. And from it, I'm subtracting three, and that's a positive three. And the answer is two. And then here is another subtraction example, and it's negative four. So we put negative 4 on our board, and from it we're subtracting a positive 6. And this is where students get confused, and they start to confuse the operation sign with the positive or negative sign. So they'll say it's a positive 6, 
So they need to be very clear that that's a positive six and that is not a negative sign, it's a subtraction sign. So we need to subtract six and there are not six, there's no positives on our board. And so we're doing the reverse thinking of what we did with addition and we're going to add zero pairs. And we can add zero pairs because they have no value and so they don't disrupt the balance of our mat. Um, so if I need to take away six positives, I need to add enough zero pairs on this board so that I have six positives to take away. So that would be six zero pairs. So there are my six zero pairs, and now I can do as the problem has asked. I can subtract my six positives, and what I'm left with is six negatives plus four negatives, so your answer is negative ten. Another example of a problem that you can do with the tile spacers, we have nine, positive nine, so we put our positives on the top of our mat. That's too many. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. <clears throat> and from it, we are subtracting a negative seven. And I have no negatives to subtract. So I'm going to add zero pairs again. And I need to add enough zero pairs so that I can subtract seven negatives. So that means I'm adding seven zero pairs. That's six, one more. And now I can subtract seven negatives and what I'm left with is 16 positives. So my answer would be 16. Then one last example is negative eight minus or subtract five. So I'm gonna put my eight negatives on my mat and it's asking me to subtract five positives I have no positives on the board, so again, I'm going to have to add zero pairs, and that means I'm going to add, if I want to subtract five positives, I need to subtract, or I need to add five zero pairs. Um, and then I can subtract the five positives and I'm left with negative 13. So anyhow, that's uh, how I introduce adding and subtracting integers. It's just one method we use. Um, the subtraction, of course, is what really starts to confuse students, so I always feel like the more models they have, um, the better. We also do a positive, negative um, number line model. That helps us, um, and this is just kind of a great idea to help them get an idea conceptually of what's going on with adding and subtracting integers and then hopefully finding um, the pattern and the rules, so to speak, that they can apply um, towards larger numbers that are greater than 10 or less than negative 10. All right, well, thanks for watching. I hope you found it useful.